Section 9.1, Conclusions and Errors. So after we make these hypothesis, hypotheses, we'll go ahead and do some statistics, and then in the final step, we have to make conclusions, and there might be some errors. Um, so there's two conclusions that we can make. So when we have strong evidence, we're gonna go ahead and reject HO. This is when we have strong or enough evidence to prove H1. Basically, we reject HO to prove H1. So instead of really proving H1, we're re disproving HO as our way of proving it. And so we did make the correct decision if HO is actually false, right? We want to reject things that are false. This is like convicting a guilty person in court. Their innocence is false. HO is innocence. So we want to reject their innocence and say they're guilty. But if it's actually true, we've made a type 1 error. So it's called a type 1 error if HO is actually true. So this is really bad, right? This is like convicting someone who's innocent. So we had strong evidence to prove they were guilty, but they were not guilty. Their innocence was true. So that's a big issue, and we'll get into that. Um, the other option is we don't reject. So you never really prove someone's innocent, right? You just don't have enough evidence to prove they're guilty. Same thing here. So we don't have enough evidence to prove H1. This might be the weak evidence that we've been talking about. So we're not saying HO is true. We just can't prove H1. Just like when we say someone's not guilty, right? We're not saying they're innocent. We're just saying they're not guilty. Um, so we made the correct decision if HO is actually true, right? We don't want to reject something that's true. So that would be like um, not convicting an innocent person. So, right, that would be the correct decision, but it would be an error to not convict someone who's guilty. That just means, um, right, we didn't have enough evidence to prove they were guilty. That doesn't mean they're not guilty. And that is called a type 2 error. When we do not reject, but it turns out that it actually is false. Their innocence is false. So let's do some examples in words unrelated to math just to get a feel for what these errors are. So let's say you think your significant other is cheating on you. So the HO is their innocence, right? The HO is they're faithful, and then you're trying to prove that they're guilty. So that'll be H1, trying to prove that they're cheating. So a type one error is if you go ahead and you accuse them of cheating, that would be rejecting HO. You reject that they're faithful, so they must be cheating on you, but they're actually faithful. So that's an error, right? You shouldn't be accusing someone who is faithful. The other option is you do not reject. So that would be a type two error. You don't accuse them of cheating, meaning you do not reject that they're faithful, but they're actually cheating on you. And that's a type two error. Um, if you think about false positives and false negatives, um, type one would be comparable to a false positive. Right, you have evidence even though you shouldn't, and a false negative is you don't have evidence, uh, but you should. So another common one is your email filter, right? Sometimes you get spam emails. So the way an email filter works is, right, we initially assume every single email is safe. That's our null. But we're trying to prove that it's spam. So the email is suspicious enough, right, to show it's spam. And so if your email filter can prove that it's spam, right, it marks it spam and you never get the email. It goes into your spam filter. And it's not 100% correct. So a type 1 error here would be marking an email as spam, 
right? Rejecting HO, rejecting that it's safe and saying, hey, it must be spam, but it actually wasn't spam. So you might miss an important email here. So type one is bad. Maybe you missed a job interview or something. So that's an error. And then type two is basically the opposite. So it, your spam filter does not detect the spam email and allows it to go through. So that's not rejecting, even though it was spam. So in this case, this is probably less of an error. It's just more annoying when you get a spam email, but you can just delete it. So sometimes one's worse, more worse than the other. So let's check out example five and six, and we'll be done with this section. There's a lot of words in this section, but we'll start doing the math in the 9.2 and 9.3. So let's look back at that snowboard example. We were trying to prove that the price went down. So our HO was that the average price was 100, and then we were trying to prove that the average price was less than 100. So now let's talk about what kind of conclusions we should make. So let's suppose the data does not provide enough evidence to show that the average price was less than um, $100 in April 2008. What decision should we make? So if we don't have evidence to prove H1, no evidence or weak evidence to prove H1, that means we just do not reject HO. We're just saying HO could still be possible. We don't accept HO, that's not a phrase. We're just not rejecting, we don't have enough evidence. Again, it's just like that not guilty, right? We're not proving someone is innocent. The idea is, is mu could be 100, but we don't know. We just don't have evidence to prove that it's not 100. Um, what if instead our data does provide evidence to show that the average price was less than 100? So when we do have evidence, we have strong evidence, that's when we convict someone. So we have strong evidence to prove H1, which means we have strong evidence to prove mu is less than 100, which means we're gonna go ahead and reject HO. So rejecting HO is proving H1, as weird as that is. So by rejecting HO, we're confident that mu is less than 100. All right, and now let's say we made, a, we made a decision for A and B, but then later on, so this is after we've already convicted someone or not convicted someone, we find out the truth. Um, so later on, it's determined that the true average price was actually 97 and 18 cents. So we found this out later. So which one was correct? HO where mu equals 100 or H1 where mu is less than 100? So even though it's only a little bit less, this is the true value. So the correct um, hypothesis was H1. So that means in part A, we made the wrong decision because we did not reject. And then that would be a type two error when we do not reject. So you can only make a type one error if you reject and you can only make a type two error if you do not reject. Um, and then in part A, part B, we rejected, which was the correct decision. Rejecting HO means we're saying H1 is true, which was correct, because it was only 97.18. So it, this section is always the hardest to get. It took even me as a math major, it took me a long time to understand hypothesis testing. All right, let's just finish up example six. Um, so we'll look at that gas price example again. We were trying to prove it was higher in California. <clears throat> so we had HO was mu is equal to $3.09 and a little bit over at 7, or mu is greater than 3.097. So let's just explain errors and correct decisions in everyday language. So a type 1 error, again, is when we reject HO, but HO is true. <clears throat> we don't want to reject things that are true. So that means by rejecting, we conclude that the average price in California is higher than the national average. That's rejecting HO, but it turns out that it's not higher. That means HO was true. The errors will always be a little bit awkward because they're errors. 
Um, type 2 is exactly the opposite. Do not reject HO. But HO is false. So that means we do not conclude. We do not reject. We do not conclude that the average price is higher than the national average when in fact it is higher. So that HO was false. So here's HO. And then we're trying to prove higher. So if we can't prove higher, that's do not reject. And rejecting is rejecting this and saying it is higher. All right, let's just do the two correct decisions. So option one is we conclude the average price is higher. So we conclude H1 is true, which means we're rejecting HO. And then in fact, it actually is higher. So we made a correct decision. And then the other correct decision would be the opposite. We don't conclude, we do not conclude. So we're just saying maybe HO is true. We do not conclude that the average price is higher. So we're not able to prove H1 when in fact it is not higher. So that is also a correct decision, right? If it's not higher, we don't wanna prove it's higher. So it does take a long time to grasp this. So it's okay if you're confused right now. It takes time. Um, but yeah, so rejecting HO when HO is false is a correct decision or not rejecting HO when HO is true. So we wanna reject things that are false. We don't wanna reject things that are true. So take a break, try to absorb this. Don't jump into 9-2 quite yet. Um, but it's okay if you're still a little confused. This does take a while.